Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Let's see. birthday Carrie and good morning everybody on this feast day of St. Faustina and Father Silos, Blessed Francis Xavier Silos. Such a special day. I just shared at the end of the rosary <clears throat> my St. Faustina story. If you didn't hear it, you want to go back and hear it. She really It's amazing the saints know us. They love us. They're interceding for us. It's really beautiful. Okay, I'm looking at my picture. I could use somebody needs to pinch my cheeks. I need a little color this morning. All right, so today, friends, we are on page 32. Oh my gosh, Paige, listen to me. Day 32, page 115, 33 days to morning glory. It might be um, 
you know, this might be different in the more recent editions, but for my early edition, I think this might be actually the first publishing. Yeah. So this was in 2011. So your book might be a little different, but that's okay. But it's day 32. I'm sure you can find that if you've got the book. And we are with blessed, or sorry, St. John Paul II on this day. So St. Faustina on this year feast day. John Paul loved you so much. My goodness, those two lives were intertwined. Such an incredible story that he would die on the vigil of the Feast of Divine Mercy. And my dad was released from prison seven years early on an unjust imprisonment. Three days before her canonization on Divine Mercy Sunday in 2000. This is also good. Okay, so St. Faustina, pray for us. And Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, our friend, first class relic, pray for us. And if you don't get the whole relic thing, fear not. Just go to catholic.com and that will explain why. Catholics especially venerate the relics of our saints, our holy brothers and sisters. It's all based in the Bible. So it's all, it's all good. Okay. Of course, sacred tradition is also all good, and we've got both with that. Okay, day 32. Three words summarize what we learned from St. John Paul II. Number one, mother. Number two, entrust a creation. Father, Father Mike made that up, I believe. And three, mercy. Let's ponder each one in turn. First, mother. John Paul's teaching on Marian consecration not only carries with it his authority as Pope, but also the authoritative weight of an ecumenical council because he repeats and deepens Vatican II's teaching on Mary. Therefore, his teaching actually constitutes the mind and heart of the church today, and we should pay particular attention to it. So what is the mind and heart of the church telling us about Mary? It's pointing to Mary's maternal mediation. It's saying she is our mother in the order of grace. It's proclaiming the good news that God has given us a spiritual mother who prayerfully, lovingly attends to our growth in grace and holiness. She is very personally invested in you and in your life. Really grasp that. She knows you. She loves you by name. God has given you to her as her own beloved, almost like an only child kind of a love. It's very, very precious. You are very precious to her. And it's her job to make you holy. So, yay. It's proclaiming the good news that God has given us a spiritual mother who, okay, attends to our growth in grace and holiness. This new motherhood of Mary in the life of the church and the life of each one of us is the constant, consoling, beautiful background to everything we've said about Marian consecration, or what John Paul often calls entrustment. So number two, entrust a creation. Seeing Mary standing at the foot of the cross next to his beloved disciple John, Jesus said, Woman, behold your son. Then to John, behold your mother. These words summarize what we already covered in the last point, that Mary is our spiritual mother. But then we read the next verse. Then the disciple took her into his home. Here is the heart of our response to Jesus entrusting us to Mary as our mother. Now, this was 2,000 years ago. Jesus didn't say her name. No, he did not. But the church through all of history, throughout tradition, has recognized that John was standing in for all of us because Mary is the mother of the church. So it was a both and. Yes, he really did want John and Mary to take each other as mother and son. He was entrusting the beloved disciple who stayed with him at the foot of the cross to take care of his mother just on the temporal realm and to love her. And he knew that he would. But also, at that moment, the church tells us authoritatively, Jesus knew us and was giving her to us, and she was accepting as well. That mission. We are to then entrust ourselves to her 
by taking her into our homes. In other words, we're taking her into our inner life, into our hearts, into all that concerns us. We are to let her into our joys and sorrows, hopes and fears, plans and activities. When we let Mary into our lives, when we entrust ourselves to her care, she intercedes for us, consoles us, and gives us courage and strength to unite ourselves more fully to Jesus' own consecration of himself for the life of the world. In other words, she brings us, and lots of underlines and stars, to the cross of Jesus. So I like to begin, whenever I'm praying with someone, I always begin there. I envision myself standing at the foot of the cross with Mary and just looking up at Jesus, still alive on the cross and speaking with him there. It's a great place to start your prayer. In other words, she brings us to the cross of Jesus, which is the final meaning of Jesus' self-consecration. And she inspires us to spend ourselves for the salvation of the world. What a mission we have, y'all. Let's get excited about that. We're still alive. Then God still has plans for us. If you are elderly, if you're sick, if you're incapacitated, and you think, what could I possibly do? A lot. A lot. Uniting your suffering to the cross of Jesus. Okay, I'm just getting a little memo from the Holy Spirit. I didn't read yesterday's Jesus speaking. And so let me just see, because maybe it has to do with this. Hold on. Hmm, like a little got a little intercom call. Open up Jesus speaking. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe so. October 4th. Woo! Oh my gosh. You ready? But may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Whoa. Galatians 6, verse 14. So this is what Jesus said. I, I'm reading this with you for the first time. This is what Jesus said to Gabrielle and to us. Quicken your faith and confidence. Speak to my extravagance of love and long to respond with your own. His extravagance of love is what he showed us on the cross. And respond with your own extravagant love. How do we show him our extravagant love? By making a sacrifice of ourselves, of our lives, of giving him everything. That's extravagant. Think of St. Francis of Assisi, because his feast day was yesterday. The saintly missionaries and martyrs, hmm. like Faustina, like Father Silos. Didn't they seem ridiculous in the eyes of the world? Yes, they did. They were so engulfed in the love of their Savior that all things seemed as nothing, as nothing to them. All things seemed as nothing to them. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the latest hurricane in the Gulf. Don't be afraid of the riots happening in the streets. We were born for a time such as this. And when the darkness descends, the light shines even brighter. And so God, the Holy Spirit is hovering, looking for souls who will be open to all that he wants to pour out right now. And you know how he's doing it? Through Our Lady. She's the mediatrix of all grace. And we want that. And so how beautiful that we're all getting in the boat with her, that we're connecting to her, that we're living in her heart, that she's living in ours because God is calling forth great saints right now. And that's you. And that's me. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay. So here's the little point to ponder for October 4th. Are you afraid of seeming ridiculous to others? Hmm. I used to be. I'm kind of over it. Talk to him about it. That desire for human respect, for belonging, you know, it's human, right? We all want people to like us. We don't want to be labeled as the weirdo Jesus freak. I'm getting used to it. In fact, I just got a really ugly email between the rosary and this uh, video. I'm not going to even repeat it, but just telling me how selfish I am. And I was like, what? But, you know, we can't waste our time just explaining everything. And the enemy likes to do little things to distract. And it's like, I just responded with, God bless you. And then I blocked her. <laughs> Don't have time for that. Okay. Back to our book. Just a little tiny side road, a little adventure off the main path. We're coming back. Kitty's back on the bus. Okay. So, where was I? 
She brings us to the cross of Jesus, which is the final meaning of Jesus's self-consecration. She inspires us to spend our lives for the salvation of the world, to take up our part in the work of redemption. As we take up our cross, as we live within Christ's own consecration, we may become spiritually thirsty, desolate, and tired. Some of you may be feeling that. I have definitely felt that in my life. Let me read that again. As we take up our cross, as we live within Christ's own consecration, we may become spiritually thirsty, desolate, and tired. It's like, wait, that's not what I thought I was signing up for. But stay tuned. That's when Mary carries us to the pierced side of Christ, the fountain of mercy. How amazing that today is St. Faustina's feast day and it just happened to coincide with this. Pretty cool. Where we find a ceaseless source of strength and holiness. It's from the wound in the side of Christ and the divine mercy. That blood and water that gushed forth. And how do we experience that in our life? Through the sacraments. I'm so happy for those of you who have been to confession or are going to go to confession before Wednesday. And avail yourselves of the gift poured out for you on the cross. It has to be tasted to be understood and experienced to be fully appreciated. The freedom, the joy that, whoo, it's like all this junk, this garbage in our souls. You clean house, you clear the windows with some Windex and the light pours in and just so it unburdens us. It frees us. In fact, I'm going to confession this morning. What time is it? 7.20. Okay. So, thus to John Paul's mind, entrustment to Mary leads to our consecration to Christ. In other words, one might say it's a movement of entrustocration. Okay, Father Mike. And then finally, mercy. Ultimate, and I wrote divine mercy next to that. Ultimately, Marian consecration leads us to divine mercy. Whoa. Today's St. Faustina's Peace Day. I know I've already said that, but it's exciting. Acts of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary lead to acts of trust in the merciful heart of Jesus. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Say it with me. Jesus, I trust in you. It's all about him. And then he would say, it's all about the Father. Let me take you to him. We see this in the story of Fatima and Pope John Paul, and especially in the Pope's homily during his pilgrimage to Fatima in 1982, a pilgrimage of thanksgiving to the mercy of God and the mother of Christ for having saved his life. In that homily, John Paul repeatedly pointed out how Marian consecration leads us to the pierced heart of Jesus, the fountain of mercy, This connection is part of the will of Jesus himself, who said to Sister Lucia in 1936 that he wills the consecration to Mary's heart. I didn't know this, or I did and I just forgot. So Jesus said this to one of the Fatima visionaries, Sister Lucia. He wills the consecration to Mary's heart, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And then this is in quotes, what Jesus said to her, because I want my whole church to acknowledge that consecration, that consecration that my mother requested at Fatima as a triumph of the immaculate heart of Mary. Oh my gosh, we're part of her triumph, y'all. I don't think I ever put that together before. We are part of the triumph of the immaculate heart of Mary. so that it may extend its veneration later on and put the devotion to this immaculate heart beside the devotion to my sacred heart. So if you don't have an image of the immaculate heart of Mary and the sacred heart of Jesus in your home, get that this week. Get it. I might even paint it, but it won't be ready this week. But we want those images in our hearts and in our homes. Jesus wants to extend veneration and devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary because she leads us most perfectly to him and helps us to receive the infinite mercy of his heart. Oh, it's all so good. Okay, today's prayer. 
Holy Spirit living in Mary, help me to spend the day pondering John Paul's Marian teaching as it is summarized by these three words, mother and trust to creation and mercy. Mother and trust and mercy from John Paul II. So y'all tomorrow, it's day 33 and our 33 days to morning glory. And we're just going to be, I just, I'm so excited because when we make our consecration on Wednesday, I'm just trusting that all of you are going to confession, that you're just, you're taking care of this or that you've been to confession within the last month. Because I just have such a beautiful image of us as little, little girls and little boys with our little hands folded in our white dresses, not pink floral like my mother put me in because she's a convert. <laughs> so funny. Our hands folded, our little wreaths of roses on our heads or in our lapel, guys. And just so pure of heart washed clean what mother would would let her little kid go to her first communion all scrubby and dirty and no our lady has just prepared us cleaned it and jesus has too it's like the two together they work together so it's like jesus was, is presenting us to our lady little kids all squeaky clean as we bring our hearts to her and jesus presents us to her as we entrust ourselves to her We consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary. So he's presenting us to her, and then she blesses us, and then she presents us to Jesus. It's just so pretty. It's so beautiful. It's so sweet. What a beautiful antidote to everything in the news right now. So let's keep our eyes on our our big day on Wednesday. Let's get ready. Do anything you can to prepare your hearts for this very special day, even if it's, it's a reconsecration for me. In fact, you know what's really neat? Today, or last night, I opened up my... Um, diary the the faint cells it's called revelations of divine mercy it's really excerpts from saint faustina's diary i love this because it goes by it has one for every day and then it goes by um by category or topic and so i opened up my divine mercy i haven't picked this up in a long time opened it up to october 5th to read and guess what was there my consecration card from september 15th 2012 Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows was the first time I made my consecration. But gosh, I'm so excited. Like, I'm more excited now than I was even then. So, who knew? All right, let's close with a song. I'm going to confession. I'm going to mass. Um, Let's see, anything else I need to respond to? Sassy is a sweet girl, isn't she? I love my girl. And it's great to have you join me. I love having you all be here and seeing your names and your faces. (laughs) <laughs> Tears of joy for Jesus's memo. How about that? That was pretty awesome. That was very cool. That's what's so much fun about like living with God, living in the life of the Holy Spirit. Let's all be Jesus freaks. Amen. It's so fun. I mean, even the heart and there are hard things. But we have the consolation that doesn't steal our joy. Oh, let me just tell you all. See this rosary? I got this in Ecuador from Pachi, Patricia Talbot, the visionary in Ecuador. I'm hoping she's coming to the U.S. in January. If she can get out, she'll come to Louisiana, and hopefully I can introduce her to y'all. <clears throat> but Our Lady, you know, this isn't so much a, a United States cultural thing. It's more of a Hispanic, Central America, South America, Mexico, Spain, their custom of wearing rosaries around your necks. But Our Lady asked for it. She told Pachi, I want everyone to wear a rosary around their necks. So I had to kind of get over that a little bit. But I think Madonna ruined it for me in the 80s with all of her rosaries and singing like a virgin, <laughs> whatever. But I wear it with great love. And it just reminds me, it's like I've got her her wrapped around me. So I like to keep that close to my heart. And then also this scarf, for those of you who knew Rhonda Baumgartner, Rhonda Baumgartner, this was her scarf. My dear friend, we lost to cancer very suddenly a couple of years ago. She was in the choir with me at St. Peter's. And I just wanted to feel her close today. Rhonda, I love you. Pray for us as we pray for you. All right, let's end with a song. I don't need drama. You got that right. 
Um, you went to confession on Saturday. Yay, Mary Claire. Father Mike's anniversary, October 16th. So you can send him an email through the Marians. I'm sure he would love that. Tell him you did this with me. Created me. Yay, Angie. Went to confession. <clears throat> Immaculate heart leads to the sacred heart. Amen. Okay, I'm just reading your comments real quickly. Looking forward to Wednesday. I can't wait. Okay. All right, I'm going to play a song and then I'll read the rest of your comments. Um, Sing of Mary popped up. It's a sweet song. We'll do that. Have a wonderful day. See y'all tomorrow. We're getting so close. Sing of Mary, pure and holy, virgin mother, meek and mild. Sing of God's own Son, most holy, who became her little child. Love it, Angela. Sorry, Katie. You can hear I place my trust in you today at 3 o'clock after the chapel on 6.90 a.m. Patty, when am I starting the next class? So, there, I wanted, there are a few videos I want to do just telling a few stories that I want to get recorded and online. And um, so we'll probably start sometime next week. So if everyone wants to get the book, Searching for and Maintaining Peace. I know it's backwards. Um, I don't know how to turn that around. But Searching for and Maintaining Peace by Father Jacques Philippe. I'm going to be reading from that next. So go ahead and get it. You can get it from Scepter Press, S-C-E-P-T-E-R, Scepter Press. And they just asked me to have ask everyone to get the book from them or from your local Catholic bookstore. You can also get them on Amazon if you need to. It's a little gold mine. Wednesday consecration be recorded. Yes, I'm going to do it live and then we'll save that and upload that video. You're welcome. Father Dave Bavanka's brother. Okay, God be with him. Amen, Kathleen. Love you, Karen. So excited. Rhonda was a beautiful soul. Love like Rhonda, that was our hashtag. does it for me. Headed to confession, headed to mass. Make it a great day. Much love. See you tomorrow.